gorgeous, sunny, crisp December day here in the Rocky Mountains. And we are going to have a great day. We're going to ski some. We're going to get our very own Christmas tree that we get to cut out there. And we are going to test our newest van item, our very own diesel heater. We just turned it on. It's going to heat up the van while we go for our ski. So we come back and it's going to be toasty warm. Cross your fingers. You can't really do that in these gloves. Stay tuned for the rest of the video and see how we installed that. Spectacular. Darren, what's going on today? <clears throat> uh, we are going to begin our installation of new diesel cab heater. It's getting all prepped up. I take the seat off first and it goes in here. And um, should be quite the project. Not sure what we're getting into yet, but. All right, let's do it. The challenge. All right, we got the chair off. That went well. Got the container here emptied out. But ours looks different than what we've seen online where other people put a heater in here. Wasn't expecting this kind of floor situation. So, we'll see. All right, you'll notice the chair is back in position, yet the heater is not installed. Is that correct, Aaron? <laughs> sad face, sad face. All right, because our van was a passenger van originally, we have this leg room underneath there, most likely that was. Foot room for the seat that used to be behind here. So, long story short, the heater would not fit in that cavity. So, we're attempting, this is Van's son, number one. Yay! Right, Van's son! Got it. That sucked. We had to remove some rubber flooring, and we're going to explore this little section to mount the heater to. Let's see how it goes! Whew, smell of vision. This is stinky stuff. End of the stunt. Oh, I'm supposed to film the holes. Did all that work already? Do you want to lock tight them? Doesn't look like much, but it actually is kind of a, a lot to drill. Get them in the right spot around those ridges. Well done, Alex. Now, yeah, I thought we were out. Oh, we had a new thing. Damn. Are you supposed to blow up and then act like you don't know <laughs> You had to pick like an awkward spot. <laughs> we're at this stage. Stage what? Stage. stage. Put that thing there, Four. stage. <laughs> Maybe. Got some oh, got foamy like stuff. 19 things to hit here. Gotta get, line up all those bits. It's tricky. 
What are you messing with over here? I'm putting the mounting thing around the fuel pump. Yeah, getting ready for that section. So it fits there nicely. That bolt through. This wiring harness. Um, we'll plug into that. We cut cut it because otherwise you're gonna have to drill a massive hole to get that through the floor of your van, which is silly. So we'll just splice the wires back together. The splice part will be in the van, so not a big deal. Shall I get the wires prepped now? How'd you do? Did you get it on there? No. Oh, not yet. Still working on that. It's hard to see. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alex. Not lining up. I thought you walled out the hole. Well, why don't I go underneath? I can take a little screwdriver with me. Yeah, that'd be good. And we'll want to bolt them, bolt it up, right? Yeah, well. Probably. I mean, I wanted to see him sit down in there all nice and that sucks, but. I want to lock tight it too. I don't think that's in here. Do you see which one's binding? I think it's the northwest one. Stud? Yep. Watch out, I'm drilling it. Northwest. Uh, yeah. I don't know which one you went in. Siliconed up underneath, got it through on a test fit, and hopefully this is the real fit. She's ready to sit forever. All right. I'll go over to the bolting action. Here's our bolt. Here's our bolter. All right. So there's the intake and exhaust. And then those are our four bolts that we'll bolt the unit down with. This is obviously the bottom of the frame. And then that there is the, is the fuel line. So we had to get all the holes drilled and it was a bit difficult lining it up, but now we're doing it. So now I'm gonna, I'm bolting it up. I'm making sure I put Loctite on the nuts so it stays secure. We did grind everything so it was smooth and then 
uh, and then put a little clear coat of paint on there also to make sure it doesn't rust, give it some rust protection. What's going on now, Darren? Van son is down below working on the fuel line. This guy's mounted, so I was going to start the wiring. So, the wiring's real simple. They give you this wiring harness uh, right here. Heater's mounted um, from below, pretty good. Wiring harness um, clips together here. This is the part off the heater itself, the cord. Wiring harness we'll plug in there. This piece goes to the thermostat, which will just run up the wall so we can adjust the temperature here. Then the other part that comes off of there is the just the power terminals through a fuse. So these go to our, this is my circuit from the fuse panel. And this came with some ring terminals that were, I don't know, designed just to go to a battery, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use these. Um, quick disconnect terminal terminals so I can disconnect it if I need to and the wiring will just tuck up under here under this the chair. under the chair under this piece so it'll be pretty slick All right you better see if Alex is not how are you doing under there just driving <laughs> Everyone's taking off fuel connectors before they know they are the worst thing in the world. Especially in a van that never gets washed under knife. <laughs> it's covered in dirt. Just went through a lot of mud. Ugh. Oh. Got one though. Need just one other one. Oh. Over I'm down one to go. Yes. Boop. Squeezies. Filled with dirt so it doesn't squeezy. Squeezy, insert screwdriver, pop off the fuel pump. Works wonders. I wish I did that 10 minutes ago before I broke this fitting. But we're here now. Fuel line ready to be installed. Woo! <laughs> So hot. Oh, a big noodle. There you go. Ow, burnt. Ow. 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 Is that a good action shot? Oh. I don't know. It hurt really bad. I don't <laughs> wish I didn't do it. What's next? There's a bolt. I don't see any bolts. So I need some clamps. I see clamps. I need more clamps. Can you give me two more of these clamps? They're on the board bench. Yeah. I didn't hear that last bit. Oh, and I need another rubber piece like this. All right, these? Yes. Rubber piece like that? Yeah, let's go grab a handful of these. I'm not good at two over two retrieval. Oh, yep, there they are. All right, just screwing something to the foot fuel line clamp. Are you filming this? Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, I'll get a good overview of my fuel line when I'm done. But, fuel pump, pump tank to do that. This came together actually super slick. Oh man. All right, remember, don't put your hose clamps right in front of the connector because your dad's gonna be really mad when he tries to plug that Wait. in. So I might leave it just to be funny. Okay, I didn't have that in the shot. Show me that again. <laughs> okay. Put that on the opposite side. Just like that. <laughs> Tight's tight, especially on those things. Cool. All right, all right. You can cut. I can mount this thing. 
here's a view that's the auxiliary fuel like tap this kind of comes like from half the, size. Okay. the top of our fuel tank now you'll notice our van has a auxiliary heater which is this thing right here so we have we had to break the fuel line that supplies the auxiliary heater. The auxiliary heater is used to heat up uh, the van engine, the coolant, when it's cold. It comes on automatically. And then you can see the exhaust here. Um, and it circulates the coolant through the heater and just heats the van up quickly. Um, so anyway, we, had, we just pulled the fuel line off of that and the auxiliary and we'll replace that piece and then we'll put a little T in it. Which You're really stealing my thunder on the fuel line, man. Or is that? What, the T? Yeah. Oh, God. Watch out. Um, we bought a, a Dorman, little Dorman T uh, to reconnect with. So we'll show that when it's done. And right now we're hooking up, hooking up the fuel pump. Remember, it needs to be at a 30 degree ish angle. <laughs> There's the Dorman T. You're really gonna shine light on my fuel right here. <laughs> Even though it's cold, it might be. Gorgeous. Yeah, sweet you touch. A lot of crap on these little clamps, but they're super sweet. You just wanna make sure you push your pliers in there when you're done to get a nice seal. Where? Right in between the two ears. Oh, get them really, get it really tight. Yeah. But this is our T that'll come off the auxiliary fuel line, dude. Yep, and that'll go back the way it was. Existing. That side. Fuel the pump heater. or the diesel heater. And then this side, I have to cut it down some because I forgot about the fuel pump. We'll just go into the fuel pump. Can we put these right next to each other? Oh, you know what I was thinking? What were you thinking with this? We're having a father son moment. <laughs> All right, finished product here. Fuel line going to the auxiliary. Fuel tap from the fuel tank, which is here. This is the auxiliary coming off the fuel tank. Then we've got a T here uh, that goes to the auxiliary heater because this is a passenger van. It's a Dorman T and we just replaced all this fuel line. It was easier. Fuel pump, pumps from there. And then I've got it routed. to the heater. That's the fuel supply to the heater. This stuff is like a heat shield type fabric. I have no idea what it's made out of. Probably asbestos or something like that. So when you're working with it, face mask and safety glasses for sure and gloves. Uh, I have no idea if it contains asbestos or not, but better safe than sorry. Uh, this little spot right, actually, this um, is this tubing, but I sleeved it with the same fuel line as this because it fit right inside there perfectly. So I'm using it for a little bit of uh, protection from damage and, and freezing. This is just a little strain relief for the fuel pump electrical. Uh, this here is, I cut it a little bit short, so I had to slit a little piece and put it around there. So I just electrical tape that, not a big deal. Um, you're going to want to get a couple of these burly heavy duty hose clamps. Um, they send these kind with, but I couldn't get it to hold up there. So I ordered some of those heavy duty kind and that seems to work work fine. Um, 
I did. I don't know if it maybe had to do with, because I ordered this longer, I ordered this longer pipe. Because I wanted the exhaust muffler kind of out back here. Um, and maybe the fit was a little bit different. I don't know. But I just bought those clamps and the better hose clamps and they work work really well. Here's the intake. It's kind of protected in this little cavity, which is where all the exhaust and the combustion air uh, pop down and the fuel line. Uh, so I just got that tie wrapped here. These are stainless steel outdoor use type tie wraps. You can also get outdoor tie wraps that are rated for outdoors. Uh, they're typically black. Um, so that's what I use there, kind of on the other end of the, of the heat shield, kind of away from the heat, but anything near the heat, um, I use the stainless steel ones. You're gonna wanna get some more of those too because they only send four with the kit. Um, what else? Um, I did a boo-boo and I, not supposed to cut this stuff, but I needed it a little bit shorter. So this is basically a coupling. Uh, it couples just fine. I just used a half inch, um, I think an inch and a half galvanized nipple. So I think that'll be okay. And then I use some of that muffler cement around here. And then I use muffler cement all up around there, around the openings to seal everything off. Um, if this doesn't work or if it starts to rust, um, I do have a piece of stainless steel, a stainless steel nipple that I can use. Um, yeah, it would be pretty, pretty easy to swap out. So but for now, this is the finished product. And we'll go take a look what's inside. All right, we turn it on. We're following the instructions. It's pumping oil. Making a noise. It's blowing. Blowing. I do a little leak check down there. There's a lot of air. Yeah. This takes, I don't know, I've seen other videos. It Ours shouldn't take while. long because it's so short, such a short run though. Okay. But yeah, I have seen other videos where it's takes forever. Our party lights are getting in the way. <laughs> Make them hanging. What's supposed to happen? And after pumping fuel successfully, the device will automatically switch into operating mode. All right, the screen went off. Must only go on for so long. All right, we got it going. We did the app thing. It's got an app, Bluetooth. You can have it on your phone. So I'm filming on my phone. I can't show you that. Um, it's cranking. Oh, it's slowing down. We tried doing the startup procedure though, and it was. Did I turn it off with that button? Probably. Oh, how do you make that thing come on? I, okay, no, I just turned it I off. I have no idea. <laughs> we read the instructions and it <laughs> made no All right, sense. It definitely is putting out heat. So it's functioning. We just have to figure out exactly how I'm to run it. Sure how it. How the controls work. But yay, success. Thanks to Van Son. Yeah. He was a big help. Super, super big. It's very helpful to have multiple people handing tools and crawling um, underneath. He did the big work under there. Yeah, he did. Fuel line was the biggest bear, but. Tool list. Well, tool list. Let's just say everything. That's the tool list. Have a lot of hardware available. I'm just gonna say everything because it's a lot of stuff. Lights, PPE, lots of tools. It only took us about three to four hours to do the initial install. And then I did a few tweaks, so that part wasn't bad. But 
it takes a lot of tools. All right, here's kind of a quick look of all the extra stuff I bought. Fuel line. Let's see if there's a tag on it. Not really. Well, for cement, Dorman fuel line connectors. I bought this little exhaust 90, hoping it would help me um, uh, kind of exit the heater at a sharper uh, angle and uh, kind of get away from the electrical stuff and the, and the fuel line quicker. It didn't work out for me, but in your instance, it might. Who knows? Uh, I bought this extra fuel line kit which I did use some of it. It was pretty inexpensive, so not a big deal to buy it. The heavy duty hose clamps. There's the owner's manual. I did not have to buy that extra. <laughs> and you're also going to get a carbon monoxide detector for the cabin of the, well, in our case, the van. Um, you know, it is a furnace, it's got a heat exchanger. If the heater, heat exchanger were to crack or fail, um, you can then, you know, get fuel, flue gas in, inside the, the living space, which you don't want to do, could be fatal. So, need carbon monoxide detector. And we've got our, our controller mounted there and our fob hanging by the bed there. So we should be able to get heat when we want to. And here's a look from the inside. Pretty clean install. Just the, the wiring harness back there. I had to piece, ours is a passenger van, so, um, you know, it came with rubber floor and stuff, which actually I like, the rubber floor is nice, but I had to piece back in some of the rubber. It's kind of a pain to cut through, but. We always use this carpet, so it just kind of covers up um, pretty nicely. And then all the other wire connections, this thing is removable, which is it's behind the driver's seat. This piece right here, it's removable. There's kind of a, a little bit of a void in there, so all the wires just boop. For this thing, I just routed them back through through here and then made a bunch of the, like the power connection and everything here, the main wire terminal is right there, but pretty slick. Um, so that looks pretty clean. And then we made this little shelf here. And wife and I, and it just sits in there nicely. That. So the heater will just tuck in under there and blow away and then just got three, three removable screws here that are easily screwed in and screwed out if I want to pull that out uh, and clean back there. This alternative location actually worked really well. Um, and the, <laughs> the beauty of it is, you know, you've seen some of the other YouTube videos and it takes forever to, to prime the thing uh, to get the fuel to the heater, but ours is literally I don't know, maybe two feet from the from the fuel uh, auxiliary fuel line tap in to the to the heater. So it was just a piece of cake to prime it. So it started up real easy, real quick, and that part of it was uh, was pretty nice. So we're pretty happy. Uh, haven't really tried it in cold weather yet, but we have tried it, and it blows blows nice hot air. So it's end of September right now. Um, We'll probably go up in the mountains in the next couple days and because we'll get into some definitely some sub freezing weather up there and it'd be fun to fun to give it a try but that's our install thanks for watching please subscribe and give the channel a like appreciate you catch you on the next one and we are back at the van we had our ski we had our tree and we're ready to check out how warm and toasty it is inside. I can hear that it's on. Let's go. Sun's getting low. We're gone, what? Three, three, almost three hours. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. So 
72. I don't I guess that's what we had it set to. Okay. Well done. I think we can be spending some quality winter time in this van now.